Hey there, and welcome back to the Train of Thought, an educational monster train series where we fight the divinity in every run. So I thought a little bit about how I wanted to introduce this episode and what I wanted to talk about, and I think the real thing I want to kind of just broach with you all is the way that I'm recording these episodes and ultimately how many episodes there are per week. When I first started this channel, I was recording... My original plan was six episodes a week. This worked out to two episodes of each series each week. And then if I had something special to put up, it would go up on a Friday. So you'd get anything from Saturday through Thursday, essentially. With the way I have recently reset my sleep schedule completely, I find it very difficult to record on weekdays. It's just hard to find the time to do it. Uh, there's... I have obligations elsewhere, I'm working full time, so it's tough. So my play right now is to record entirely on weekends. This works out well because I have the free time, I can simply do a lot of recording, and I also don't have to bog down the office, which is where I would do my recording, and prevent my SO from using this place. So, because if she's awake at that point, then it's very, it's like rude. She can't use her computer because her computer is set up in here too. It's not great. So I try to kind of handle things a little differently. Obviously, this wasn't a problem when I'm recording late at night after she'd already gone to sleep because it was very easy to coordinate that they would be in bed, I would be here recording, no problem. But now I'm leaning a little bit towards a five episode a week schedule. So Saturday through Thursday instead of, or rather Saturday through Wednesday, and then not having an episode Thursday or Friday, unless I have time to do an extra one, that would be a good opportunity to slot in like a blessed seed, for instance, which would keep kind of the parody we're expecting already. So I'm thinking about that. I think the, the current lean is a five episode a week kind of setup. And then just seeing if I have extra time, I can get that sixth episode in. If not, no worries. And then I do all my recording on a weekend so that I don't have to mess with the office otherwise. So that's what I'm thinking. I realize that I don't really think there's a question here or an opinion I need or anything. Just kind of letting folks know that's kind of where I'm going for the moment. For the foreseeable future, we'll say. And that is about all I have to say there. So... I'll also apologize potentially in advance. My voice is a bit hoarse today because I had a very social day yesterday. There were a lot of people, there's a lot of general conversation, and there were a lot of work presentations. So the combination of these things left me kind of a little ragged. So I suppose this week's episodes, I'll just have a little bit more hoarse of a voice than if I had recorded them while not dealing with that. So fair enough. Uh, our previous episode on this particular series is actually, yeah, was with this lady. We had Little Fade, brought us up to 138 wins on the series. It was an extremely for content episode, is the way I like to describe this. It's kind of fun because I don't normally do those, but basically when I say for content, I mean I was trying to make something fun and entertaining, and I wasn't really that concerned about winning because I knew the line immediately. We started with votive key on firelight, which essentially means that you don't have to answer the question of how do I reform fade at all. And you just give her endless and let her run. And there were a lot of folks who kept mentioning in the comments that I should have considered getting her killed once and reforming her at burnout one. I do recognize that strategy, of course, obviously it's good. But one of the big advantages of just giving her endless immediately is you can immediately ignore all of your reforms in your deck completely. Uh, this also worked out really well because I had put a burnout one into my paraffin thug, which meant that I wanted to reform him, right? If I tried to get both of them killed and reform both of them, then you mess up your endless and you mess up your burnout alignment. Uh, you're just adding risk. Despite the fact that yes, it is stronger on turns where she doesn't otherwise die, you don't need your floor to be stronger. It's a question of understanding how strong you need to be in order to win a combat. And in most cases, I was weaker in the end because I didn't optimize her deaths, but it didn't matter, we won regardless. So I just knew how strong I needed to be. So I very intentionally did that to make the deck management extremely simple and to reduce risk, right? Because I had multiple things burning out. Speaking of Paraffin Thug, though, he's kind of what I meant by a four content. I love money. 
I love money in these games because it's really satisfying to see money rack up, especially in combat. Getting those payouts, just seeing 20 gold pop up, ooh, that feels good. You give him trample, he kills a bunch, ooh, that feels good. Now, I could have earned more money. You're all right, I could have played him in front, or duped him, or done something like that. I took a very weird sort of mixed run where I kept him to make cash in the back as a back line and then also had a deranged brute chilling in there because of course I did with a molten casement infused rage imp just for nonsense and so we're generating rage we're going crazy we have stealth we're looking good and I had just this mixed run there were like at least eight different ways I could have run won that run with different floor configurations but we chose the one we chose and it was good so made a ton of money made a ton of rage seems solid today we're moving on to echo right i love little fade little fade is fun because she kind of she upsets the standard way you play champions which is one of my favorite things about her it's why she's so enjoyable for me is that i go to little fade and despite the fact that the run is going to be easier for me because it's fade and she's strong I like the fact that she has a dominating presence in the run in a very unique way. I think that it's easy to get in the rut of all of the other champions, or many of the other champions are very unga. You play them one way, they do a thing, it's fine, it's very low impact, you're constantly throwing them away when your floor is weaker than it would be if you got rid of them. And then your run is essentially just, I don't know, I'm playing Hellhorn units, or I'm playing Awoken units, or I'm playing Stygian units. And how many times have you done that? A whole bunch. So when I'm playing 12 runs and my the monotony is broken up by Little Fade or Spine Chief, hell yeah, that's a good sign. Love to see it. So we are moving on to, like I said, Echo Right, which is fine. He's a good champion. He's awkward. He can create some awkward scenarios, but he's fine. So we'll go ahead and get started. So as always, do like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. And let's get this episode running. Interesting, interesting. Okay, well, I hope you're all doing well today. I'm doing fine. Other than my voice being hoarse at the beginning of a recording session, I'm doing just all right. I had a really, really cool episode or episode session of D and D yesterday. We're playing Candlekeep Saga. I am Candlekeep Mysteries, rather. I'm running it as the DM, and I'm not going to tell the whole thing because I told my SO, and it took about 45 minutes to explain the entire session. But basically, we just had a real cool finale encounter inside of a mansion that was haunted and stuff, and just a lot of cool things went down. So I'm I'm really feeling high off that. That was good. The players really loved it. So good stuff. Let's play this. We are Exile Wormkin, Default Awoken, so I have Restores. Interesting, it's fine. I don't love it, but I don't hate it. This is, interesting enough, this is kind of like the perfect setup for a Spikes run with Symphony of a Soul, if we see the parts for it, which is kind of curious. We'll see. It's a really hard line to assemble, is the problem. You have to have you have to see things in the right order. It's it's interesting. It's fun to see it, but I don't think it's something you just go after because it's probably not good in most cases. But we are that. We are facing Days Talos. This is Spell Shield Fell and Patient Seraph with Bounding Echoes, Sharpen, and Total Recall. Total Recall is a bad card. I don't like this, but it is a burst of consumes potentially. So maybe there's value in it in the early game if I'm forced down Shelter or something. Not Shelter, Shell Smith. Bounding Echoes is excellent. I love this card. Turn things purple, please. Also consume, good. Hatch Egg, also good. Sharpen is not great. It's Sharpen. We know how I feel about that. I'm not going to belabor it. Okay, node-wise, we have temples on two, three, five seven eight so five temples is solid we have the dupe on eight on steel side nothing fancy we have a dupe on seven with nothing good there just caverns money trinket shop on the other side is okay good magic shop on six with a vortex the caverns is on the steel side though interesting we do also have another steel magic kind of dichotomy on ring five so lots of choices here 
another good magic shop though. It's worth noting the magic shops are stronger here than the steel shops, so I'm going to try to use the steel shops early game to build up off this, so that I can go magic shops mid game. Ring 4 looks terrible. We have a very poorly assembled set of nodes. The dupe is with a wormkin banner and money, whereas the removals are with health and a horde. It's probably the removal side, despite the fact that it's low impact. We do have double early steel shops. We have a woken banner, a woken banner with the steels. Magic side has a wormkin banner and pyre remains. Okay. So some choices, but it looks like I'm playing an Awoken unit, probably. If I can find some kind of offensive scaling with Echo Transfer, maybe, this could be a very straightforward quick sweep run, potentially, but we'll have to see. Done Echo or Petrified Crucible. Look. I do have spikes. Eight spikes damage. This is like shockingly good actually with the sharpen. Dun Echo is low impact on Echo Right. It's not bad, but consider that I have bounding echoes and I could potentially intrinsic this and do some fun stuff there. Dun Echo does potentially provide value if I can get an intrinsic what echo transfer, like I said, uh, with a get purple. If I can get it infused with Dun Echo, good RNG it helps out a lot there. It provides low value. The Petrified Crucible is immediate value thanks to Sharpen. Very odd, but I suppose I actually lean towards the Crucible here. No, and I'm not, that's not even calling a shot on a Thorned Hollow. That's just Sharpen becomes Spikes 8. That's pretty good, right? That's a good amount of return damage here. I'm going to take the Crucible. Okay, that's weird. Marsh Lord or Shellsmith. Marsh Lord is almost certainly correct because it's a stronger play. Shellsmith is weird here. I get a, I get some value, but I have healing, right? So the armor is not my strongest opinion. I don't want to take. I want to take Marsh Lord. The egg is good. It's fine. I'll take money. That gives me a solid early game. I'll take it. We will take this unit trial. It is damage bonus. I have pings. I also have this sharpen, which is going to be interestingly decent. So there's that. I will be putting all of the pings into the bad guys. 100%. What a bad turn. Seeing the sharpen this early is not great. Okay, so I think the important takeaway is we have to sharpen the front because the spikes will be able to do something. And I'm going to ping one of the enemies on bottom. We need to be pinging those off. Am I going to greed? Yes, I am. I'll restore upstairs. Okay, how does my friend look up top? We can take the bounding echoes here for funsies. I do kill everything up here. I can hatch on this turn. It's probably smart to do so. I take a ton of damage next turn for it, if I do that though, because I'm relying on the spikes. I could ping, ping, save 10 here, and then train steward the middle, and then hatch after taking the remaining damage. I think it is correct to do so. We will ping this. I guess I could only stop seven versus 10. I do need to ping up here, or I think I give up on terms of hatching this egg, which I do think I want to do. 12, he's taking what? 25 on this floor? Woof. I think we need to pop him out. For sure, yeah, I think so. I don't think there's a way around it. I need something that gives me an echo. Okay, something that gives me an echo. We can ping one, we clear the floor. Woof, okay, we did it. Good job. I need to... I need some pings, friend, but I also need to charge up top pretty badly. I don't think these train swords are doing anything here. We need to... We will restore up top for sure. I guess I will play a the train steward out, but I need some pings here or else I think we die. 
Okay, we live by some miracle, but we can ping in front and this looks a lot better as a result. Woof. Cool, well we get through it thanks to just tons of stats, I suppose, but it's not pretty. Cool. I mean, it's not pretty, I say, but we take zero damage with the trial, so what am I scared of? Uh, it is going to be Purple Echo Infusion here. It's not offensive scaling, but it's a good card. We take these, for sure. And Razor Sharp Edge is what I will click here. I know I already, the Sharpen is purple, but you can't make me take a third one. It's going to be Razor Sharp, for sure. And, oh my god, Thorn Hollow. Come on, they're showing it to me. There's no better choice here. I didn't call the shot, I promise, but it is Thorn Hollow here. Yes, absolutely. It's a very clean early game. I have the Crucible. Wow. Wow, okay. There's like a serious argument to go left here. I don't need this. If I'm going in on Thorn Hollow, I don't know. It's wild. I think, is Thorn Hollow better than Awoken Hollow there? I, I think he genuinely is because the Petrified Crucible does so much here. Yeah, I think so. We can also still play an egg behind him, which is kind of disgusting. Plus 25s will be valuable. Infusion-wise, what am I even looking for on him? The truth is the best infusion is actually Shard Channeler, if you want to know. We go to the logbook real quick. Find Awoken. Where are, you, where are you at, bud? Shard, Channeler, Infusion. Spikes 2, friendly units. That's the best one. Although you could do Shattered Shell for funsies. I really wish Thorn Hollow's Essence didn't suck so bad. Spikes 10 is so terrible in exchange for one space and some Garbo stats. It's just a tragedy. Just so bad. In fact, Edge Prior is almost certainly stronger than... Thorn Hollow, right? In one round, he gets spike six from that. In two rounds, he supersedes, doesn't take an extra space. So we'll be on the lookout for Edge prior to. Yeah, it's interesting. There's not a lot in the way of good infusions here. Obviously, there are some on the, like, I would take Keeper of Echoes, possibly. But I think just looking for some plus 25s is good. So, sure. I don't see the good value in the Holdover. I mean, Holdover Echo Infusion pretty solid okay so the holdover is functionally good minus ones are going to be good too actually and then wormkin banner though well i think it's left actually minus ones are value here and double stack is spikes am i gonna double stack sharpen spell chain sharpen heck yeah you know we're doing it not really uh keeper of echoes is Fine. It's not the ideal solution. I actually don't want this, right? It's, I'd rather look for Edge Prior or Shard Channeler. Those are both considerably better. And even like Husk Hermit with plus 30 HP would be better. I just don't think this is going to be good. I don't need this plus one here. We're going to skip that. I don't care. We'll take the Magic Shop. I will make some things cheaper. I think there's a strong inclination towards... Like, Sharpen is basically worse restore here on this guy so i do want a restore at zero cost because this is this is prime x5 material if they give me a plus 10 by the way i will also put that there i'm gonna 20 consume an echo break for certain we're gonna spin this hold over okay hold over echo infusion is shockingly good here even though it isn't a restore it's really good because I can spell chain it right away. This makes my Relentless formidable. I think it's got to be that. It's just too strong to skip. I will take another minus one on a restore. These are the most important cards here. It didn't show me the plus 10, which is fine. I will spell chain this Echo Infusion. That is a disgusting amount of survivability out of the gate. Cool, we'll move on. I do have to think about Patient, who could merc my guy. I'll take this trial. We easily... We, I mean, okay, I say easily. I don't think it's easily with this stupid unit in the back, Mr. Spikes Man of Scariness. Not Spikes, this Resolve Trigger guy, but it's okay. We'll play Thorned Hollow first. Echo right behind, I do. 
I will self ping the egg here and then I will restore restore which immediately puts him up at 12 spikes which is huge I will razor sharp to cake money here I will echo infusion the front I think it's good may as well keep doing it I have 12 spikes it's not a ton but it's something okay we get to sharpen which helps cool I will sharpen and then I will echo infusion a fair bit here. It's enough spikes to chew through it. It's not pretty, but it doesn't necessarily have to be. We do hatch there, which is great. I will echo infusion the front, which is cool. I can restore here, which is good value. And I can play the burden up here, which at least does something. We take some damage here for sure. It's not a ton. Four. We easily get through it on the front here. There's no questions asked. My man's got 100 HP and does 50 damage and spikes. It's fine. Yeah, all right, cool. Good chat. <laughs> Good chat. Cool. Poor Echo Ray gets sent, but we have spikes and some guys that take the hits. No worries. Take four damage. It's fine. I'm looking for purple. I'm also looking for heal. I will take the hosting kin as a stronger ping here, I believe. It is acceptable. It also consumes, which is good. I'm not going to go soul siphon here. It's not going to be correct. Uh, ad adaptive mutation with purple in my common pack? Excuse me. It is a full heal, and it's purple, and it's consume? I, I mean, okay. It's actually pretty okay. Awoken Hollow Infusion? It's not a terrible choice. It could... It does something. I guess? I guess. I don't love it. I don't love it because I don't want to infuse it right away, right? The space... I'm the Kinho's Carapace. The problem, of course, is I can't get the Echo right behind Thorn Hollow here. I actually don't think I do this. I think I skipped this and take 10 gold. I would have potentially considered Husk Hermit there, but they didn't show it to me. We'll go left. I don't have a lot in the way of money, but I don't need anything other than a plus 25 here, really. We could go to the right, but again, I can't re-roll that shop, and what would I even do with it? A plus 10, maybe? I hit the holdover, which is already a disgusting run, so I think we'll go left, look for a plus 25, honestly. It's fine. Endless. Ten and Spikes three. The Spikes three is mm, actually pretty decent. That's that's pretty okay, right? That's one restore trigger. It's not great, but it's something. I will take another... What is it? I will take another spell chain if they show it to me on this restore. What's in the banner? Wilting Sapwood. Why are you here? You are the worst unit in the game. I would rather use Train Steward's Infusion, which is objectively superior here. Why isn't your infusion not just better? Why do you exist? I'm so angry. They show me Wilting Sapwood. I, I would I don't even want to humor any of that. That is That is very angering. <laughs> Oh my god. Yeah, I'll take the 10 in Spikes 3. It's fine. It's fine. Because it might show me some kind of overflow here if I can re-roll and find a good enough plus 25 or something. Which they don't. Which is unreal. Well, fine. Alright, Caverns, what you got? Yeah, minor refraction, of course. So we have a tiny Thord Hollow. I could have taken plus 10 damage on him, but it's okay. Uh, this is incredible. Wow. Okay, Tiny Thorn Hollow. Sure. That's fun. No, well, no more infusion slots. That's eh, a shame, but it's okay. Am I going to intrinsic anything now? Not really. None of these stand out to me with an intrinsic. Plus 30, none of these stand out to me. I mean, a plus 30 restore would be cool. I could have maybe done that and then hoped for an X5. That would have been probably the right choice, but 
The question you have to ask yourself is, in, is Intrinsic Bounding Echoes actually worth it on this run for the egg? I technically get an egg backline, which is outrageous here. Weird. I don't think so, actually. I don't think so. We'll move on then. Yeah, 25 shards, it's a bit low, but we have backloaded shard generation on this run, so I'm not that worried about it either. And... Wow, I can actually face tank here with a train steward and save some of this HP. Yeah, I can do that. It also saves the Ember Drain, so I will do that. Weird. Then you put Thorn Hollow in, and then we place Echo right in the back, which pops that out. I will take the Echo Break on the back downstairs. Yep. Cool. Goodbye, train steward. No worries. That's my floor. Now I just need to hit restores to the best of my ability, and we'll be okay. I will shoot big and scary on the middle. I will work on big and scary down below. Total Recall technically exists on this run. We will hard click on every restore that we are shown. I will play Echo Infusion for big number. I will Razor Sharp on the egg as well. Cool. I, even this guy up in the middle, I'm not afraid of him, right? We play the Echo Infusion into Eggman. This is weird, but it's correct. Then we drop Bounding Echoes, which pops them out. Then we heal in the front, and we can save a chunk of HP here, I believe, which is worth it. Sure. Sure, sure, sure. We should crunch now. I mean, this next floor looks scary up until the point where you realize it's just not. We use the HP scaling here as a means of keeping alive, and he's just killing every unit now off the spikes. So that'll be pretty good. And then here's an interesting one. We can toss the adaptive mutation here, which is really weird, but not terrible. And then... Yeah, I mean, you, you what? You adaptive mutation here for a 125 and a heal, and then we toss him some HP for sure to offset that. And now he's also a DPS. Should I have considered giving him a multi-strike, maybe? It's not the worst idea. Look at this guy. He's hitting at 125. He's fine. And then he just we just scale his HP back up, which is great. Cool. I mean, he's actually quite powerful. That's cool. As my chair snaps on the floor, you'll love to hear it. Echoes of the past? That's a good outlet for my echoes into my egg, I suppose, right? Quick Tome is not terrible either. If I go all in Marsh Lord and then have a big trample dude helping out on the floor. Both of these are actually good. The problem with the trample tome is I have to hatch them first. Cycle of Life is actually worth considering, but I would rather just hit a restore. I'm going to take the Echoes of the Past. We can put that in the back. Bog Deep Cocoon? Why are you here? What in the world is happening? I mean, I could give Animus of Will to my... <laughs> Animus of Will to Thorn Hollow. Yeah. Okay, there you go. That's a, that's a run. I mean, I'll just use a Train Steward Infusion at this point in the worst of cases, right? It's 15 HP. It's fine. No Husk Hermits. Yeah, I don't want to give him space anymore. And everything from Boggy Cocoon doesn't help. Yeah, I'll skip it. Cool. Weird, but I'll take it. I do not need space right now. That's pretty good. Ember is fine, but I'd rather have Draw to offset the fact that I am playing a Holdover every turn. I would like some minus ones, potentially. Magic Shops are high value. Especially since I can't do anything with the steel shops anymore, which is good. So I'll take draw here. I think that's good. And I will seek removals, I believe. The dupe would just go into, what, restore, honestly. So I don't think that's as good as just removing cards, which we will do. Pyre health. I'll look at the horde. Lost luggage is perfectly good here. Channel heart's fine, but I don't have any stings of value. We will cut train stewards. 
I'll leave one in just in case. Sharpen is actually not really great now either. I should probably cut. I should seriously remove a sharpen actually. Yeah, I'm going to cut a sharpen. That total recall is on the chopping block as well. We will make Marsh Lord 2 for sure. Am I going to take the cash? Yes, I am. I want to go to this magic shop and be in a dominant position. Cool. We move on. Give me a Symphony of Assaults. Multi-Strike is actually a boon here because they hit twice into the Thorn Hollow, which is huge. Really wild turn one. I will play Thorn Hollow. I will play Echo Right. I will immediately lead off with an Adaptive Mutation, I believe. Yes. Wild. But yes. Cool, we get a Bounding Echoes here. I will play the Restore. I cannot get money here, so I will Weight of Contrition. Ping the Egg a little bit. Just charge the floor. Cool, cool, cool. We spikes up here for sure. I will Weight of Contrition, and then we Echoes of the Past, our guy in the middle. Cool. Seems good. We get the Bounding Echoes. Took a risk here, but we could always ping the back, so I was never that afraid. We Echo Infusion, our man up front. I will Weight of Contrition here. I am going to Hosting Kin to save some of this life. For sure. And then we just get rid of the Train Steward on middle. It's fine. We HP scale. And then we play double weight of contritions to get them out of here. We get through this, no problem. We heal our lad to the best of our ability. We'll echo infusion him for sure. Cool, that's good. I would like to stop some incoming damage. And I think the best way of doing that is... I mean, actually, I think the ping is correct the hp is correct here instead yeah it's fine sure he just kills everything which is great we don't have a lot in the way of options we're basically just playing echo infusion and then two weight of contritions which is fine it will get through this no problem yeah cool we did it doing what 72 here as far as spikes which is acceptable at this stage cool and we also have a guy hitting in the back for a truckload Priory's Cloak, I suppose, is a relic that I will click for more value than 25 gold. That's funny. Wormkin Spike, Forgotten Trade, Eternal Kinstone. These do not help against Patient, which is my only real concern now, so I will skip these. And I will look for... Okay, Engraft is really good. Awake is not bad. I don't think Regen is how we're getting through this, though. I'm going to take Engraft. We don't have all the parts to make Regen compelling. We will go to the right. I need to hunt the magic shop. Forgotten boons. We're removing cards, one of which is sharpen, probably the other of which is total recall here. Let's look in the temple real quick before I decide. Purge is good. I'll take that probably. A plus 30 is fine as well. What do I have? If you give me another holdover, what would I do with it? Put it in new engraft probably. I'm going to permafrost the adaptive mutation. This lets me kind of hold on to it for a silly turn where I can give myself... Like, it lets me hold on to it for the turn where I have... What is the word I'm looking for? The heal, right? <laughs> uh, this is a very strange card. Yeah, it's just really weird in this run. A 20 consume is fine. I'll put the minus one somewhere. Removals. I want to purge something. I'm going to buy a purge here. This purge is going into sharpen because it makes it playable and then it goes away, which is good. This is a good way of getting rid of this card. One of my removals is total recall 10 times out of 10. This card is just nasty here. It's probably a train steward, honestly. They're hard to play. Yeah, I only need to keep the one. I will hold out hope for an edge prior or something better. 20 consume on an echo break's not a bad call. Honestly, it's a good way of getting rid of it, and it turns it into a solid ping, which I like. We'll do it. 
minus one here. I think the right choice is to just make more restores cost zero. Yeah. Permafrost, a serious consideration. serious consideration here i could choose the turn i think this is right we're gonna do it i'm gonna and it lets me re-roll this which is fine i get another holdover okay holdover in graft plus 30 is kind of disgusting here it is a huge heal which offsets incredible incoming damage and yeah for sure obviously this is correct you could do holdover minus one or in graft for just the ping and a free energy relic here but the plus 30 is just sitting here. This is huge in terms of survivability. We will take it. I will then take another minus one. Is there a plus 10 here finally? There is. Honestly, a cheaper set of restores is just better though. More of these costing zero is the right choice. We move on from here. Excellent floor. Excellent floor. Heaven seal. I fear no creature. I fear no creature. Cool. It's going to be Thorned Hollow with Echo Right. We start the healing process. We will sharpen on him, which puts a big number up. Honestly, the restore is going to be worth it, I believe. Yeah, the restore is worth more, in my opinion. Cool. We take Engraft. It's value... I heal, I heal, I should ping out some things up top, possibly. Yeah, it's actually correct. Watch this. We're going to do a ping here, and I'm going to ping here, and then I will razor sharp up top. You're going to see why I'm doing this. It's because I want to use Priory's Cloak's damage here to get a, a leap up on this fella, right? We Bounding Echoes. I in graft which punches a good chunk into him and i think we actually pop him out if i hit this yeah i pop him out if i hit this now this looks weird because of the zero here what does he have 30 attack 10 health i can flip this what does this do? I think this actually I think this hatches him at 39.10 and then he pops out. Yeah, that's cool. That's good because he pops out as a 69. Right, of course. Nice. Cool. Okay. And then I suppose we just charge up here. There's no reason not to. We're doing 60 damage, 62 damage with spikes right now. Cool. Yeah, I think we're okay mathematically speaking i think we are fine we get like a full heal here we just kind of toss some spikes we will play the echo infusions i am going to what i think the right choice is to double ping a spikes dude i mean the armor dude here because this armor doesn't does carry over with the heaven seal not that i actually think it matters all that much but i could potentially get him what low enough I could potentially get, yeah, get him into kill range from the Thorn Hollow, which is actually pretty decent. Cool, actually, we're okay. We we get through this, no problem. Yeah, we pop him here. Cool, we give him some HP. We're going to absolutely decimate our friend, what is it? What's her name? Self-made Harpy. He's going to stand negative chance here. Oh, yeah, hit six times, my friend. That will be... <laughs> uh, that's very funny i'll take razor sharp here and we'll toss the echoes that he passed in this yeah sure we'll also do a 115 damage backline here which is pretty decent we'll just also happen to have that which is good the bounding echoes are nice because we can give hp to our friend which is excellent news and then we just we what we self ping here and then we take another plus 36 into that lad meanwhile we're doing an astronomical amount of damage via spikes here which is really silly we toss the razor sharp at the enemy we're good right she just basically yeah, she kills herself on spikes that's pretty good improve firebox with my lost luggage love it soul crushing guild snap click it's purple and it answers patient 100 there's that's the run 
Ensnare is an excellent card here, better than Unleash the Wildwood. And here's why. I can lock a mini boss on my floor. So he has to take spikes damage twice. Good. I do not need Merchant of Steel. I'm going left. Just remove more cards. We're hunting good magic shops here. I will take the horde in the middle. Pyrestone housing is actually quite tempting here. Wow, thorn fruit, and I skip channel heart, huh? It's okay, I don't want stings. Bloating fungus is not bad. It's something, but I think it is pyrestone housing here. Interesting. So now I actually do value a plus 25 hunt. Interesting. Well, fair. Okay. We'll see if that does something for me. Another holdover is uh, wild. We put it on ensnare here, 10 times out of 10. Wow, okay. Yeah, ensnare is good, it turns out. I will remove cards. We're gonna leave in one train steward because he's kind of, he's the holdout infusion on ring eight. But I will cut one of them because they are still hard to play. And I'm going to cut we're honestly at a point where I'm seriously considering cutting Echo Break. Right? There's not much else I need to do here. Yeah, I'm going to cut an Echo Break, actually. It's rare that I remove these because they're such good starters, but I don't need these other things. We just need the deck to get small. Holdover on Ensnare guarantees that a mini boss never walks on me. And it replaces itself, which means that it's essentially, I draw. it costs one draw once. This card is disgusting. This is a mini boss killer. The only thing I should consider is the reroll and look for permafrost on soul crushing guilt. But I think this is just stronger. I will take another minus one into the last restore. That's good. I will take a 20 consume into another echo break. Just get this to a point where I'm doing a whole bunch. Real good magic shops. My cards look solid. Uh, my deck is even smaller than this when you consider the fact that three of these Echo Breaks are consumers. My turn one is disgusting here. Cool, that's good. We're going to Thorn Hollow. We're going to Echo Right immediately. I will... what? Adaptive Mutation on turn one. It's not a bad idea, but I don't need it. We gotta be careful. Don't adaptive mutation my egg that does zero. I should razor sharp it, then adaptive mutation it. Cool. I will burn one bounding echoes here. There's no real reason to do it, but I do I just don't want that many. I will play a ping here. Good. I will toss the Echoes of the Past into my lad. It's worth more than him hatching here. I could also still hatch him here if I wanted. I don't. I'll hold on to that Bounding Echoes because if it hits the engraft, that's just good value. So, cool. Great, we get the Echo Infusion. We're going to start clicking it. We take the heals, Echo Infusion. I do want to get rid of this Train Steward, so we get rid of him. Cool, we hatch our friend very quickly. I see no way that this falters here. We take the heal. We're already at 42 spikes, which is not great, but it's okay. I am going to... What? I need to spend my hosting kin and my pings. So I think the choice here is what? I think I'm gonna send it on the bottom fellow here and then just blast him a couple times. Soul Crushing Guilt on the bottom? I mean, it's not bad. We'll take it into Fell, maybe. I don't actually think that matters all that much. We'll hold off. Yeah, it's fine. Cool. Floating Fungus might have been fine, right? It might have been okay. We'll take the big heal here. It's good. I will heal. Or heal slash give HP. It's good. We do all this. I will ensnare. There's no reason not to. Cool. It's fine. We should chew through the rest of this. Yeah, here we get our bounding echoes. It's good. I will lock down the guy in the back just in case. Because I am playing a whole bunch of cards here and he might just walk on me. I, I, I don't know what I expected. He does not. We take a really good echoes of the past for plus 66. That's pretty solid. We have a surprisingly compelling floor. 
is the way I will describe this. Surprisingly compelling in that I have really good frontline, really good survivability. I am restoring up to a respectable level. I also have this ensnare, which is valuable. And there's no reason not to, cur to daze her downstairs because I'm probably redrawing it pretty quickly here. Yeah, so we just continually lock enemies down here. We take a million HP. We engraft. We take a ton of restores. We ping, and then we Echoes of the Past again. We do 557 to fell here, which is unreal. That's a lot of damage to just do on a free turn, by the way. That is a ton of damage to just do on a free turn here. Wild. Okay, I mean, I feel really powerful right now, actually. Surprisingly so. We get our multiple heals here. I have 198 spikes. I have a lockdown. It's, it's great. I get the Soul Crushing Guilt on the wrong floor. It's fine. I actually am just super okay with her attacking into my incredible number of spikes here she just does not really stand much of a chance i could also soul crushing guilt her she doesn't even swing now because we get killed by the ridiculously powerful egg man which is wonderful awoken's rail spike is incredible because i have this firebox all i am is one intrinsic away from a real disgusting turn one which, snap click, of course. Draw is a question mark. I'm drawing six plus two. So I'm drawing eight a turn, but I don't need Ember, right? What is, what is Ember doing for me here? Every single one of my restores is free. So I think it is just draw. Wild, wild, yeah, okay. All right, fair enough. No Symphony of a Soul yet. No Edge Prior yet. It's unfortunate. I technically could self-infuse, by the way. I don't mind the extra space now. Just start with spikes 10. That's real sad, but I could do it. I could do it. When would I do it? I don't have enough money to ver justify going left, so I guess I will go right. This is weird because... Well, what's in the caverns? I don't know. Let's find out today. Show me what's in the caverns before I do. A spike. Well, I mean, I will remove the other Echo Break, right? I don't need this card now. It's the only one that doesn't consume. Yeah, it just gets in the way. All right, sure, why not? I'll take it. I'll take a removal. Why not? This is actually a very strange and good run. Spell Chain is excellent here. We snap click Spell Chain. This goes into a restore. I just need to turn this restore. I actually may just duplicate this restore now. Just period. That's just great news. This is incredible. Yeah, love that. Intrinsic, by the way, excellent. I should intrinsic the Soul Crushing Guilt. Yes, this is how I answer patient. Okay, did it, done it, good. The dupe here is almost certainly just this restore. It's good, it turns out. Dark Forge, I, I mean, repeater, what would, they, what would I repeat? This weird adaptive mutation, some bounding echoes my three echo breaks now we just go bog deep cocoon my friend and this run looks very strange we have the opportunity for the final temple to infuse go to 135 i need to be careful about 135 ancient hate i don't care about here it's fine this is penitent so i do need to watch out for a 290 on floor one okay well we got a 290 on floor one it's not great it's not my favorite, but we should be able to hatch here pretty easily, so I will do that at least. Echo right landing, bounding echoes solid. I will continue, I will bounding echoes again here. And I will self ping the egg. He hatches, I can actually just pop him out immediately and save all these echoes. This looks like he's killing him, but it's not. I'm doing 24 and then he hatches to the etch. So it's actually really good. And then we just take restores here. And I can play out the train steward. I could have maybe considered 
pinging something. We're actually okay. Yes, we play the mutilation for sure. The echo break is... I could deal with one of these, but I would like to do a million damage on this floor, right? I could kill one of these purifiers and draw better next turn. I could also just lock down something. But yeah, I'm going to obviously hold and snare up top. I would like one of my purges, or one of my consumes to be up here for the 1010 etching. But I could kill a purifier and draw better next turn. That's true. I could do that. Interestingly, I can also adaptive mutation the bog wormling here to give him 30 attack, which is pretty good. Cool. So the first play, I can get through the spell shield and kill a guy. I'm probably okay. I'm going to take one echo break up top for that etch. I think that is correct to do. I do want to purge here. So I think we'll just keep shooting just in case. Get rid of that. It's okay. Two curses, but we draw a ton of cards. We are able to ensnare this lad, which is good. I didn't get my engraft yet. Unfortunate. I can take the restore, restore. We play the self mutilations for sure. He's ensnared. I can take a real solid plus 48 on the middle here or another restore. This does hurt my adaptive mutation. It does kill this guy, though. But he dies next turn anyway to the 48 from this spikes. That is still damage he has to take, though. That is still damage he has to take. I'm gonna... I'm going to... I don't think I'm gonna get a chance to Adaptive Mutation with all these curses coming in right. So I will just Echoes the past here. I think this is the right choice. And then I'm going to Rail, rail Spike for zero here. Just to get this card out of my deck and take the etch. Fine. Okay. We're taking curses. It's not great. It's okay. I can now do the engraft, though. It's excellent. I ensnare the man in the middle. Fine. Mutilations. I continually restore here. It's huge. I will play the echo infusion here. For my last echo. For my, well, for my last ember, rather. It's good. Okay. Curses. Unfortunate. The floor is getting silly here. I will engraft. We clear the floor shockingly, which is, you know what? Great news. I will still engraft something or ensnare something here. We echo infusion. I would rather take the other restore right now. Actually, no, I'd rather echo infusion up. Yes, for a lot of reasons. The main reason being I really want to have a good relentless plan. We ensnare the man in the middle. Look at this ensnare, by the way. Incredible. Love that engraft for me, too. That's just real nice. I do want to avoid the mutilations here so we don't get the other restore. We're looking at 126 spikes, though, which is great. Okay, no more curses is a good thing. We will ensnare the enemy that is not dying here. We will heal up. I will play a whole bunch of cards. I would like very much high max health, but I will also take spikes when possible. Okay, no more curses. I want HP out the wazoo. I will for sure soul crushing guilt the boss it's correct to do so we're loading up now we are loading up and with that turn i add 60 damage to my lad certainly yeah he's at 224 after this echoes the past excellent cool Okay, I think with these enough, with these turns, we get through this, right? We get through this. This is a scary combat because we ate so many curses, but we have the max HP to cheese this a little bit, which is great. Echoes of the past, we just take more damage, I suppose. I mean, no reason not to do a little bit more. Cool. He just punches for 250 around, and then we get through it. That boss is scary. 
It's going to look similar to Patient here. I'm going to take another Soul Crushing Guilt to guarantee that Patient never swings on me here. Yes, it's purple. I'll take it. A second one. Focus Growth. Oh, Edge Prior. Edge Prior. We've done it. My lad has emerged. Incredible. Now, I could take removals, but removals are actually difficult here. What do you cut? It's going to be the train steward is one cut for sure, but I'm going to infuse the edge prior. Yeah, we just go left for a plus 25 maybe, and we can duplicate something fun. The duplicate is possibly just an engraft. This card replaces itself, which is nice. And it's a trigger, which is nice. I think it's left. Yeah, we're going to go left. Okay, lock that in. Heal. Give me a plus 25, please, video game. I could give him the multi-strike of Fabled Legends, but I'm going to just spin this. Look for a plus... Are you serious? I'm going to give him a large stone, all right? Just to hell with that. I'm giving him a large stone. We do this infusion. For sure. Edge prior? Absolutely, bud. Absolutely, my lad. Incredible. Spell chain is also really, really good. I run out of Ember a little bit quickly. I can Intrinsic the Awoken's Rail Spike, though. Wow. There's a lot there. Oh my god, I can give him the Multi-Strike. Oh, but I got rid of the Multi-Strike. It's okay, we're going to give him a Large Stone. 40 HP, honestly, acceptable at this point. That's basically a plus 25, but better. So we're going to do this. Uh, he can, we can support this, right? Two space him, two space echo, right? It's good. Cool. Yeah, large stone. That keeps him from dying on turn one. We're going to purge the last train steward now. I don't need him. Cool. I will take the spell chain here. Or rather, the intrinsic is a certainty. Intrinsic the rail spike. Absolutely. The spell chain here is... It's just a restore, but Ember suddenly becomes a bit of a challenge now, right? I am I have so many spell chains in play, I actually don't know if I want that one. I probably remove Razor Sharp, by the way. That card is not a purple card, and it's not amazing. It's fine, but it's not amazing. Yeah, I don't love it. What am I doing with this adaptive mutation? I <laughs> it's it's weird. It is a very weird card here. Yeah, I'm not sure. It it could be good somewhere. We're not going to remove it. I think is it removing razor sharp? I think it might be. It's not bad. It is the thing. It also gives some initial stats to the egg which has value because then I can adaptive mutation the egg for some reasonable value. Okay, so there's that. Am I gonna take Gnarled Root? No, I'm gonna take first Help Hacked because I have the Rail Spike. I can play everything in my hand and then do a plus three on this and hit my whole deck essentially. Okay, so it's gonna be first Help Hacked. I think I cut some random bad stuff. And I think the dupe is on I think it's the Engraft, honestly. This is a great card. If I hit it with the Intrinsic, it's excellent. The Intrinsic Rail Spike, it's excellent. And it replaces itself and is a trigger, which is just solid. So we take that. Yeah, we're going to do that for sure. Engraft. Yes. Cool. And with that in mind, I do think that this is a removal on... I don't, uh, Razor Sharp is fine, but I don't love it. I don't think it adds enough here that I care. I could do the same thing with Echoes of the Past, right? Put a plus six on there and then just let it ride. Yeah, I think we cut this Razor Sharp. It is not that helpful. Goodbye. All right, I am then also going to take first Help Act because like I said, this is very strong for my intrinsic play. And uh, we have a purge here that I'm looking at what would I like to cut on this in this moment you can hear the cat invasion which is no worries you all ask for cats you get cats so we have we have cats yeah look at that good hey bud yeah it's good to hear you too 
Well, good boy. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, you all asked for cats, so you get cats. That's perfectly fine. Cool. I think I'm actually... I don't know what I would do with this removal, actually. It's this weird position of what do I actually cut here? I could cut an echo break, just get rid of a ping, improve my intrinsics. So improve my rail spike odds of hitting something useful. I do think the double soul crushing guilt is going to matter. Yeah, I mean, I guess I'm going to cut an echo break. We're at such a weird position. I don't need to do anything else with my money. You could cut this adaptive mutation, but when played well, this is a plus 60 damage to your stupid egg, which is pretty darn good. So I am going to just burn an echo break here, I guess. It's weird, but it's fine. Cool. 155 out of 100. Surprisingly aggro for a Thorned Hollow run, but behold my strength. You're going to watch this and be like, wow, it's good. So let's go kill Patient. I think we have all the tools in play to guarantee a win here, thanks to the days and everything else. Cool. Looks like a good floor to me. I will Thorned Hollow. Echo Ray. Okay. I will spend the zero ember on these restores up front. I need to make space here. I do need to make sure I have enough echoes to soul crush and guilt him twice here. So I'm gonna actually restore on mid floor, as weird as that is. I will engraft up front, up top. Yes. I will draw 11, which is actually only 8 on this particular combat, but it will be fine. It's actually only 7. Well. I don't know exactly what I'm thinking, what I'm imagining I'm going to hit here, but I guess I will play it and see what we run into. Okay. Okay. I do need to, Engraft is excellent by the way, I do need to ensnare on this floor, it's cool. This lets me do one Soul Crushing Guilt, which is great. I think I will hard commit. I got a, I did get the Echo Infusion with that Intrinsic Rail Spike, so that's great news. I, I'm going to lean into this, right? We're going to do a Restore on Middle. I'm then going to do a Ping on this thing which has just been bounced all around. This gives me an extra three days here, and then we do double restores up top, and we'll be okay. I need to watch out for taking a million damage from the, what is it called? The melee weakness, but I don't have any kind of, yeah, we don't have any kind of, what is the word I'm looking for? This is a pretty decent 30 swing on the adaptive mutation here, which I think is good. I'll do it. I need to make sure this Light Wings hits me is the way I'm trying to explain this, right? Need to make sure that guy hits me. I will Bounding Echoes here for scaling. We'll ensnare. I will Hosting Kin the boss here, and I will Echoes of the Past for a 42 damage jump. Good. Okay. We need to make sure these melee weaknesses are getting cleared. And the second that I hit a yeah, soul crushing guilt, we need to lean in on it. ASAP. So line up. We do need to engraft up top. It is a good call. We're for sure echo infusioning this guy. He's getting hit. Great news. Cool. So I'm actually going to spend a bunch of my restores downstairs to guarantee that I'm getting dazes here. I will restore some more to get more soul crushing guilt he has 10 days i think reasonably we're probably winning off of 10 days here okay yeah i think we kind of just let let it ride now and we lean in hard on this guy and it will be fine we just play a million cards per second on yeah we just yeah we just actually do it this way we get ridiculous scaling here we echo break something because i don't know you might as well Sure, and then I will Echoes of the Past for another 72 there. It's a really good Echoes of the Past. Cool, it's free damage essentially. I'm not that scared, we're getting hits in, we're okay. We play the Engrafts. This is another case where you may as well continue playing the Ensnare here for sure. I will, ah, why not? I'll daze him again, there's no reason not to. We'll get some, we'll get the rest of the scaling up top though. Yeah, that's fine. 
Okay, I'm thinking we're looking pretty good here, right? Yeah, getting a Soul Crushing Guild on this turn, real good. Incredible. Lock down enemies, I don't even need to worry about them. We just kind of go ham. It's great. Our Echoes are in good shape for this Echoes of the Past. Our Restores are in good shape for everything else. And our Spikes is doing 240 here. It's excellent. We have a ton of HP. We are super fine. We're also very effectively mitigating everything else about this run, which is his big damage. We have 270 here. I'm not afraid. I'm going to lock down the spike this guy I will restore here just to get one more days and then we're just gonna put these upstairs there's no reason to do anything else here fine we're almost at the point where we're killing the double heavies with the spikes I don't even need the guy anymore which is just unbelievable so that's cool I will lock down the 290s on the relentless floor cool we'll just get rid of that we're gonna play a whole bunch of spikes here because it turns out I think spikes are a good mechanic when you have this many of them. And we take a casual plus 78 damage into my back line. I am going to do much of the same again. Yep, 290 HP. Turns out that's pretty good. We're going even higher. I'm going to lock down this guy. I'm going to restore him. And then we're going to take another three days. Seems okay. Cool, I have 19 regen, shockingly, just from how intensely I'm able to do this. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm fully disrespecting the boss here, by the way. Fully disrespecting the boss. I have no fear about this lad. We just keep doing absolutely everything. And then with my 438 spikes damage, I drop a casual plus 90 into the bog wormling here. Cool. Good, good job, man. He doesn't even have a chance to swing. We get really good numbers. I have the ensnared lockdown enemies. I don't see this as faltering. And I even get something out of Hef here. Incredible. We love to see it. Blank pages? That seems like fun. Yeah, sure. I'll take blank pages. That's a good one. We love blank pages when it shows up like this. Cool. Okay, so this is going to be wild. I don't even know what they're gonna show me on this particular combat. We'll see what champions we get. This is a pretty bad opener because these dead weights are gonna lock down my draws on the rail spike, but fine. I technically could play middle. I'll think about that real quick. Echo Wright is going to die unless I heal him a bunch up top. I didn't really consider this, but is this a better choice? I do like the extra turn. I can heal him, right? I also don't need him. He doesn't do anything after the hatching happens, right? Yeah, I have the days anyway. I'm not worried. We'll play Thorn Hollow Friend first. Then we play our buddy. I'm now going to Bounding Echoes here. Okay. I will ensnare on this floor. I'm going to play as many cards as I can. I will play out this Soul Crushing Guilt. Again, I like I mentioned, I have this. I draw eight here. What do we hit? Both in grafts? Disgusting. Disgusting. Hitting both in grafts is incredible. Oh, and check it, actually. I can do Echoes of the Past in graft and then we can adaptive mutation here for a huge swing we get more ember back we hit one of the spell chains here as well we can hosting kin and i get three more days on the boss that is a disgusting turn one yeah actually we are incredibly winning after that pickup that's just outrageous. Now we just lock things down, play cards. We did miss the Echo Infusion here, but it's okay. We hit some other useful things, so I'm not that worried about it. We're just going to burn Echo Breaks here. I kill this floor pretty comfortably 
Do I? I'm not actually sure I do. I'm gonna pop some of them, those damage shields, actually. I think it'll help. Every single one I pop just auto-dies here, which is fun. Cool, cool, cool. That's pretty good. I, I get the ember back anyway because of the power of the engrafts here. I will just lock down the boss permanently. I'm going to spread the spikes out, I think. I'm actually going to ensnare the wilt wings in front here on bottom. Yeah, I think that is correct. Yeah, I think that's good. And we just kind of keep going on top floor, right? We're already up at 69. Here, we take the echo in... Echoes of the past, rather. Big number. We like big number. Great. Yeah, cool. In fact, it is Chains. I do want him to perish. Chains is really annoying. He's just not, not your friend. I am going to restore a whole bunch. It is valuable to do so. I do wish to continue locking down the boss. I do think I want to spread these heavies. I mean, the heavies actually just die. But, okay, we still do it. It's fine. And we have the bog wormling to clean up the floor. No problem. The curses will be annoying, so I do want the curses to go away. We take HP because our relentless answer is just this spike's monstrosity. For sure. With the regen doing... 200 and something. I mean, even the, with the days, I think I'm not really worried about anything else. But we'll Soul Crush and Guilt the boss. This middle floor doesn't scare me. So the right answer here is actually to ensnare the protector who doesn't attack into the Thorned Hollow. That's pretty funny. Cool. We easily clear the mini boss here. Not worried about him. Yeah, he even dies on this floor, which is actually shocking. The fact that he perishes is actually quite unreal because yeah, that's crazy. This next floor doesn't scare me at all. I will split off the conduit on this floor. I mean, it doesn't matter. They all die in one hit to my lad, so they attack once and then perish. So I guess I am just going to ensnare up top because there's no reason to. Sure. Adding that shard to my deck is a sadness, but it is a sadness I will have to deal with. We are just going to play an astronomical number of restores. It's good. Turns out I like restores. And then I just uh, don't feel like dealing with the extinguish on High Priest, so I'm just removing him from the run. Cool. Yeah, no worries, actually. I'm just going to remove him by locking him down. And goodbye, my friend. Again, not afraid of anything on this floor because they all kill themselves immediately. Cool. Let me take another 18. It's not a lot, but it's fine. They all die on one hit, which makes this great news. We are going to lock down and get rid of mini boss. He's, he's already gone at this point. So I will remove just the spikes guy on mid floor. Top floor is essentially free damage here. I will shoot the enemy, which kills him. Shoot the enemy. We just charge a disgusting number of spikes here. Behold my 426 spikes damage and 16 days into the boss. Is it fair? Hard to say. Do we win? Absolutely. There's no universe we don't. The High Priest doesn't even get to top floor. I am extremely unafraid. I am just going to click cards because clicking cards is why I'm playing this game, and it turns out that's fun. Incredible. How does 18 days for it feel for you? Meanwhile, our Thorned Hollow heals up any damage he took with his 31 regen and... 474 spikes damage. So that's just incredible. Yeah, we answered everything here. Our spikes was through the roof. Thorned Hollow Man, you know, sometimes he's good. Also, I was drawing so many cards, blank pages literally did nothing. I love to see it. <laughs> I was drawing so many cards, 
blank pages did absolutely nothing. That's okay, it's a fun relic to pick up anyway. What a good run. What a good run. Very solid. It, this is a weird one because it's going to be strange seeing Thorn Hollow on the front cover of this one on the thumbnail. Because very dominant position. Quite a good run for Thorn Hollow. And I even mentioned at the beginning, really good clan combo for Thorn Hollow in general. But I wasn't going to call the shot. So we'll go to the run summary. Cool. Mr. Thorn Hollow, my friend, he, he did great. He did great. And the unironic Petrified Crucible back when I still had Sharpens was actually fine. We took a little bit early. Like, this was not... In was I, I only took four damage in this whole run. Never mind. I thought this run was a lot more scary than I thought... It was a lot scarier than I originally considered, but I took only four. Hitting the three holdovers on this run was kind of unnecessarily powerful. But, sure. The Ensnare was just icing... Having Soul Crushing Guilds was a guarantee into Relentless, pretty much. I'm reasonably certain we could have gotten through Patient, but the days let me play very disrespectfully, which is good. The Engraft was hugely powerful, topping off our friend every turn. And weirdly enough, I actually did manage to make the Adaptive Mutation big play there on our Bog Wormling. So this was actually worthwhile. This was essentially a huge 60 damage injection, essentially. Which is, when you think about it, basically as good as Echoes of the Past in this particular case. So, okay, fair. But I did draft this Adaptive Mutation on Floor 2. So, you know, I wasn't guaranteed to see Echoes of the Past. But obviously Echoes of the Past is a better card in this moment. Replayable. Functionally does something with my Echoes that are otherwise kind of pointless. Also purple and cost one it's good there are runs where this echoes of the past would be annoying if i actually needed my echoes for something like say i don't know decay or chief but not on this one on this one we did not need that so we love the echo infusion we ultimately managed to get the improved firebox intrinsic rail spike combo which is just such a good choice when you hit it and we also had that first hell pact really solid just all around very powerful run. I felt like I answered everything. We even got Edge prior. He's going in the thumbnail. We got him. Incredible. All right. Well, that brings us up to 139 wins on the series for an absolutely fun run. I don't see this kind of a setup very often, but it's really cool to be able to put it on the channel. So, yeah, awesome. Uh, so, hey, thanks a lot for watching this. I really appreciate your time. As always, you can give the video a like or a dislike if you want. You can subscribe to the channel if you want to see more. And stay tuned for what's next. Take care, folks.